In this video, I will be talking about the Mesh Anything model. So I will start off by talking about what is Mesh Anything, why use Mesh Anything, go over point cloud to mesh using marching cubes, talk about some of the differences between marching cubes, remesh, and Mesh Anything, go over how Mesh Anything works, talk about the VQVAE encoder, go over the shape conditioning, and then finally end it off with some of the limitations with Mesh Anything. So what is Mesh Anything? So Mesh Anything can be used to do two things. One thing is it can be used to convert a point cloud to a mesh, and it can also be used to take a dense mesh and simplify the mesh. So here I have the OBJ file of the bear. On the left here is the input, and on the right is the output of Mesh Anything. So if you zoom in, you can see that on the left, there's a lot of fine details in terms of the tiny meshes. But if you look on the right, you see that a lot of the fine details have been simplified to larger faces. And you see in this case, we actually don't lose too much information because a lot of these smaller meshes don't really add more information since it's on the same plane. So why use Mesh Anything? So as we saw earlier, it simplified the faces a lot. So some of the benefits of this is that you could still represent the same mesh without losing model accuracy. So what does this help us with? It gives us less memory usage and faster rendering. And also later on, if you want to deform your mesh, it kind of helps to have a more simplified mesh to work with. And some other things that it helps with is no bumpy artifacts or oversmoothing for corner cases. So Specifically, some things that it's good at is like sharp edges and flat surfaces. So here you can see is an example of uh, two rendering of a really fine mesh to a simplified mesh. So this is just another example, but we'll be looking at more later on. So point cloud to mesh using marching cube. So traditionally, before all the AI implementations, the main approach was to use marching cubes. So just to give you guys some background, the way it works is you start off with a point cloud here. And here in the first row, I'm doing it in 2D, but you could try to expand this idea to 3D later on. But the idea is you start off with a point cloud. Once you get a point cloud, you want to set up a grid. This process is called voxelizing. So you're trying to find out where the points lie on the grid. And you could here I'm drawing a pretty um, sparse grid, but you could make it as fine as necessary, depending on how much detail you want in your model. Once you have that, you have a surface here, in our case, as a circle, and you want to determine which part of the circle is considered inside and which part of the circle is considered outside. Once you do that, you figure out all the points that are inside and all the points that are outside. So here on the right, you see that I've put dots on all the points that's considered inside. So of course, this is a very uh, coarse version, but you could make it finer to get better resolution. But once you get all of the, these points, you have these different cases. So now this is showing in 3D. So all of these cases tells you how to handle all the different points. And depending on how the points lie in your voxel, so now if you had a 3 by 3 um, or I mean a 3D voxel in this case, then you would find out which combinations of points lie on the inside. And based on that combination, you would choose the corresponding uh, faces to fill that voxel. And then you essentially go through all of the grids, and then eventually you should get a sphere that will look like this. So marching cubes versus remesh versus mesh anything. So Remesh here is part of Blender that helps you, um, as the term suggests, remeshes your mesh. So you can see here on the first column, we're dealing with marching cubes. So marching cubes here, you see that we're dealing with 90,000 faces. Okay, So you can see that there's a lot of details, but there's some issues, as you can see here, when you try to remesh it. So here, when you try to remesh it, you see that there's some bumpy surfaces that's happening here. And remeshing, the point of that is to reduce the number of faces. So you can see we're going down to 33, 3.5, uh, 1.1, and then 0 0.28. So you can see the issue with the remeshing process here is that as you remesh it, it tends to over smooth some of the surface. Whereas if you look at the last column, so this is using mesh anything, it tends to have 
much fewer faces compared to the original. So here we're looking at 0.64 thousand faces. And you can see the overall structure is still pretty good. And you can see some of the parts that it had issues with previously, which is the corner on the bottom. It does a much better job. And here is another example. So again, you can see that we're starting off with 200,000 faces and then uh, we're reducing it to 84, 7.4, 2,000, 0.46. And comparing with mesh anything, we have um, 0.8K. So you can see the some of the specific parts, like this part that was um, circled, you can see that some of the surface looks kind of bumpy, whereas on the right with mesh anything, you can see that it's more of an expected behavior. And again, we see the same challenge when we try remeshing, where the surface starts becoming um, turning into a blob. So you can see that the remeshing doesn't do quite a good job. So this is where mesh anything really stands out because it reduces all the meshes while preserving the structure of the object. So how does mesh anything work? So the idea is you want to use some method here like 3D reconstruction, text to 3D, LiDAR scanning, and so on to obtain a point cloud. So one way is to get the point cloud. Again, some other ways is if you had the mesh, they'll do some things to get the point cloud from that and then do some things with it. But here, the main pipeline is to get it from a point cloud. And you can see that um, you'll get some feature and then pass it into this mesh auto regressive transformer, pass it through a decoder, and then you're going to output the mesh. So the VQVAE mesh encoder is one of the main parts of this um, mesh anything. And it's kind of the equivalent to the LLM word encoding. So a lot of things that we see like ChatGPT, it uses that similar concept. But now instead, we're actually encoding the faces for the words. So that's kind of what we're doing. So the main idea is you have a mesh and you describe it with faces, so F1, F2 to Fn, and then your encoder extracts the feature vector, which we call Z. So these are the Zs here. And then the vector, the feature, the feature vector is quantized to T with codebook uh, B. And once you get this T, you're going to pass it into the decoder, and then you're going to get your reconstructed mesh. So the VQVAE with shape conditioning uh, this is an extra thing that they added. So the previous was what they called the vanilla version, and then this one is with shape conditioning. So the main idea of shape conditioning is you want to have information about the shape of the object, and you introduce the point cloud encoder P to the sequence T. So they added on to their um, pretty much the word that they're passing in, so the LLM equivalent word. So they pass that in with this extra information, and what it does is if you look at some of the details here, some of the surface it behaves much better. So you can see there's certain areas that's problematic, and you can see that once you implement that, a lot of the surface actually looks a lot better. So you can see that some of the issues don't show up anymore. And same thing with the example on the right here. So if you take a look at the hat as well as some of the face area, there's uh, parts of the mesh that's not too smooth. Same with the leg. So as you can see, Mesh Anything has this um, pros and cons. Um, some of the limitations that we see with Mesh Anything is that it's not good for large scenes. So up to now, all the things that we've seen have been very small scale things. And another thing too is that it's not going to be as stable as Marching Cube. So part of this is because, as you can see with like ChatGPT and all of that, the generative nature is not always going to be so reliable. So we tend to see the same thing in meshes as well. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.